children at Gilesgate Primary School. Lovely to see you all again this week. Can I just say thank you for the amazing feedback from the luscious lemon cheesecake that we made last week. Especially to Leola and Darian for their fabulous photos. Your cheesecake looked absolutely amazing. And of course, Jay Jenkins, he made two small cheesecakes which looked absolutely gorgeous. And also, Jay showed me up with his lovely chef hat and his apron to my boring one. So anyway, this week we are going to make Mrs Moore's Rocking Rock Buns. So first of all, make sure your oven is on to about 200 degrees Celsius. You may need an adult to help you to do this. So first of all, we are going to mix our flour and our salt into a bowl. Now I prefer to use a sieve for this just to add a bit more air so that your rock buns will rise a little bit. So just pop the flour in and also while you're doing this, a pinch of salt. So just a bit of a shake of some salt and just sieve that through. Next we're going to get our margarine and we're going to pop that into our bowl with our flour and our pinch of salt and we're going to rub it together so it looks a little bit like breadcrumbs. Now to make this a little bit easier just use, try and use your fingertips rather than the palms of your hands otherwise it will get too hot and too sticky. So I find it easier to try and cover our margarine with the flour and then what we do is we just bring it up and we just gently give it a little bit of a squeeze and keep rubbing through until it looks like breadcrumbs and all the margarines rubbed in, okay? Next we're going to chop our fruit. Now today I've chosen 50 grams of sultanas and I've also chosen, I've made up 50 grams using the some glassy cherries and some apricots just to make it a bit more different so obviously we don't want to cut up our sultanas but we do need to chop our cherries and our apricots now again we're using a sharp knife so you may need an adult because we don't want to end up like that okay when all your fruits are finely chopped like that we are going to add our chopped fruit and our sultanas into our dish. Oops. And we are also going to add our sugar. And then we're going to get our wooden spoon, our wooden spatula, and give it all a nice stir together. Okay. Next we are going to add our beaten egg. Now you might be able to crack your own egg open and give it a little beat with some adult supervision. Okay, I've had all mine already done for me, which is great. So what you need to do is make a little hole, what we call a little well, in, in the middle of our mixture here, so that all of the egg doesn't stick to the bottom. And then we're just going to pour our egg in, into the middle, and then give it a little stir. Okay. As you can see, it hasn't quite come together yet, so what we're going to do is we're going to add some milk to it, to our mixture, just so it becomes a nice stiff dough. We don't want it too sticky, otherwise it will take too long to cook. So we're just going to add a little bit at a time, not too much, just a little bit, in the middle again, into the well, and give it a little stir until it comes together, so a nice stiff dough. Okay? Your mixture should look something like this, so just nicely come together but it's not too sticky. And then we're going to put it into sort of rough heaps onto our baking tray. Now the baking tray I'm using, I've also got some grease proof paper there as well. It just saves your baking tray getting too messy and taking too long to cook. Now I like to use a spoon for mine, so I've got two tablespoons here and I'm going to, depends how big or how small you want them to be, it's totally up to you. 
So I like mine about this size because they do spread, so you do need to spread them quite well out onto your baking tray. I think I'm going to get about six on this baking tray, okay? Now, as you can see, I've managed to get, nearly lost them, I've managed to get six on a baking tray. Now, I do only have one baking tray. Some of you may be lucky and you may have two baking trays. So, with my leftover mixture, I've just popped it into another little tin like that, and that, that will cook absolutely fine. So, as I say, you can make them as big as small as you want to. I'm now going to pop them into my oven onto the middle shelf for about 10 to 15 minutes. After about 10 to 15 minutes, your rocking rock bun should look something like this. Nice golden brown on the top. Now, the way to test to see if the cooked, if you've got a metal skewer, you pop it right in the middle. And if it comes out clean, it means a coop. Don't worry if you haven't got one of those, because you can also you do the same with it with a knife. Just pop it in. If it comes out clean, then you know that they're cooked. And my other two that I did in the tray have worked out perfectly fine as well. Now these are delicious eaten when they've just come out of the oven and they're still nice and warm. So I've opened one up already for myself, and I like to have a little bit of butter on the bottom. And also some jam. Now you can use any fruit you want. If you've just got sultanas, sultanas is fine. Or anything that you've got in the cupboard. Now it's in the taste. Mmm, absolutely delicious. Sorry Mr Turner, these won't be coming in the post for you today. Mmm. If you do get a chance to make Mrs. Moore's Rocking Rock ones, I would absolutely love to see a photo on the Facebook page or any feedback or any suggestions that you'd like me to make for something next week, that would be great. But before we go, I do have a special announcement today. And I've got a happy birthday card. Because this week is a very special week for a little boy called Jay Jenkins. It is his sixth hearing birthday. Six years since he got his magic ears. Happy birthday, Jay. Thank you all for joining me in Mrs. Moore's kitchen. Remember, stay home, stay safe. See you next week. Bye.